everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are getting ready to take a road trip. I am going to visit my friend Vanessa. Vanessa owns Mother Cluckers and she raises poultry and she's doing some really neat things on her farm these days. Uh, she is incubating a lot of eggs and um, she's hatching them that way and this year she is even boxing those eggs up that are fertilized and sending them out in the mail and people can either put them under their heads for incubation or they can put them in their own incubators and uh, introduce those kinds of breeds to their flock. So um, also I have a secondary purpose for going today to the farm and it's going to be a surprise and it's going to be a surprise for the ladies in my flock. So let's get in the car and get going and we're going to go see Vanessa. Guys, I am so excited to be here and we're just going to walk down to the barns and meet up with Vanessa so we can get all the information. Look guys, look at these handsome toms. Look big boy. <laughs> she caught me from behind. I was like, I gotta go. She was in the bargain bin down in Ohio. Okay guys, I am here at Mother's Cluckers with my friend Vanessa and um, she's just gonna tell us what Mother Cluckers is all about. So Mother Cluckers started off as just a little hobby and it turned into poultry breeding. And uh, so Mother Cluckers is all about hatching uh, chicks, goslings, ducklings, and turkey poults. And I sell them locally currently and at the Ann Arbor and Dundee swap meet. <laughs> And occasionally, I thin out my flock of extra grow outs and roosters and males. So she's here today picking up an extra male, male silky. Yes, and so I told you I might have something on my sleeve today, and that is it. I am here to pick up a roux for the ladies. And, um, you know, it's chick season, and I always get baby fever. And instead of going to TSC or Family Farm this year, I want to hatch out some babies. My girls always get broody. I always have two girls to get broody and one day I will have to share with you my funny funny broody hen story but I have come to select a roux from Vanessa and I am looking at a silky roux and the reason I chose a silky roux is because uh, my experience with roux in the past have not been good. They have been really aggressive boys and when they've made it with the girls, they've ripped their feathers out, they've chewed their combs off, and my girls just get so sore overbred. and overbred. Overbred, and um, it's it's just not a good situation. And you know, silky guys are smaller, and I'm hoping they're going to be more gentle. So, Vanessa, will you tell us a little bit more about the silky breed and what is unique to them? So, the silky breed is a bantam breed of chicken. They originate over in Asia, uh, China. They're a black skinned chicken, so they're black from the tips of their toes to the head. Their skin underneath the feathers is also black, which he's a little fluffy to be able to see it, but got dark skin. Uh, they're, so they're a lightweight bird. They're uh, known to be epic mothers and broody, brooders. Um, they'll hatch tons and tons of eggs. They're a very friendly breed. They're a great breed for beginners. Um, if you notice, they're fluffy. They're not like normal chickens. I'll show you the feathers. So silkies are kind of furry. They're very soft, very plush. Think of them like a kind of like a little plush toy. Um, they're also usually typically a really good one. Has blue earlobe. So this one's pet quality. He doesn't have great blue uh, earlobes on him. And his comb is a single comb. Um, silkies typically, I believe it's called a pea comb. Um, so it's more rounded and kind of like a nut looking. Yep. That's why they're called peacombs. peacombs yeah. And uh, and that's pretty much it. Oh, they got oh yeah, they got feathered legs, and they also have extra toes. So if you look at the feet, they're different than a normal chicken. They got extra toes. So this guy here is pet quality, and I believe he is a a blue with leakage. So he's got white leakage and uh, looks like gray leakage. But he's still a really nice looking little boy, really friendly. 
Awesome. Do you have any other questions? Does he have a name yet? No, he does not have a name yet. Okay, guys, so drop some ideas in the comments about names that you would give him. Uh, I would love to hear what names you have because he doesn't have a name and we're gonna have to do that. So it is so great to see how knowledgeable you become. I remember when you started out with like six chickens and um, like we kind of start out the same time. And Everybody's she has just, start somewhere. Right, and she has just grown and blossomed her little poultry business. It's so amazing. And of course, I love to, um, you know, shop local and help out my fellow crazy chicken chicks and, and uh, do those things. So um, we're going to look at a couple other males and we'll let you know which room we take home and uh, give us some names. And we will also tell you later how we are going to introduce him to a whole house full of ladies. That is a unique experience and there's a trick to it. So there is. It's very tricky yes, introducing new birds. It even is. a male with no other males present. Right. It's right. still tricky because the hens are going to challenge him. Exactly. So he's probably going to get beat up the first couple of days. But, and, so, and we hope not. But, but eventually the girls will get used to him and then they'll welcome him. Yeah, so that's what we're hoping. They're going to be attracted to him. And because he is a smaller breed and um, and they are more docile breed to begin with that hopefully that that's going to bridge our our problem with the aggressive males we're going to put him in the car Ready to go home Ready to go home meet the ladies yeah let's go there we go there we go we got them all buckled in Right, well, if you can see out the window behind me, it is dark, and I've been waiting for dark for a while now because that is the trick to introducing the root to the ladies, and this works with all kinds of chickens. If you are introducing um, more hens to the hen house, or if you are introducing uh, younger chicks to the hen house, um, or a rooster to the hen house. The trick is to wait until it is pitch black because chickens cannot see after dark. And if they don't know their door has opened and they wake up in the morning and there is a new chicken in the house, they suspect that it has always been part of their family. They obviously have to know it's different. They obviously have to know that it wasn't there yesterday and now it is there but the door didn't open they didn't see it come in so their philosophy is that it had to be there all the time that usually works of course whenever we do this i always monitor the situation tomorrow we have a lot of wind damage to clean up there was a lot of wind last weekend and it did a lot of damage in and around the chicken run and so we are going to be out there tomorrow working and I will have a lot of opportunity to keep an eye on him and how they're treating him. Um, there is a pecking order. There's always a pecking order. Somebody has to say, I was here first. I'm the biggest and the best. And that happens naturally within any flock, but we don't want it to be um, a bully situation. He's just a young roo. We want the ladies to take to him. So I'm gonna be out there a lot tomorrow and um, most of the day being able to keep an eye on him and make sure that everybody's just getting along really well and he's getting treated well and that he is acclimating well too. I want him to feel comfortable. I want him to know where the food and the water is and making sure that he has everything that he needs. And I can't take you with me out there to the coop tonight because it has to be pitch black. Um, this gets really creative because I've had to learn to count in the dark where the steps are and how many steps it is to the door and how many steps from the door to the chicken run and um, from the chicken run to the back of the coop. This is how we're doing it. We're doing it through the back of the coop where they really can't see and we just have to be very, very quiet. So. I'm not going to bring you along for that because you won't see anything except me going shh. So let's go put him in and tomorrow we'll see how he's doing. Hi everyone. It's really early and um, as you can see the sun's just starting to come up and there's 
probably just enough light in the coop for them to realize somebody's in there, somebody new, and I just want to be out there and get their back door open so they can come out before they get too rambunctious with somebody. <laughs> We're going to turn on the light. Whatever. There's a little guy. He's over by the door. No, don't go out that door. There he is. Right where I put him when I put him in last night. Morning, Mabel. Hi, Gertie. Hi, Anna. Come on, Faith. Come on. I think we're gonna have to go in and get our little guy. So we'll do that. Well, he hopped up on a roosting post. Hey, little guy. How are you? Well, good morning. You wanna go outside and get something to eat? Come on, I'll show you how. And here he is. So I brought him over with the rest of the girls and feeding time, breakfast. So he can mingle a little bit. Now, well, he seems to be doing okay for now, and we'll be back out to check on him soon. There is a whole work day planned out there today. Uh, we're gonna start with cleaning the coop, and then uh, get to taking care of all the wind damage that's out there. And that may be another whole video in itself. So we'll be out to check on him soon. So we will just keep checking in on him. And I think he's gonna do just fine. So thanks everyone for watching today. Please thumbs up and subscribe to follow along. And if you have any names for the little guy, go ahead and put them down in the comments like we said before. And have a great day, be blessed to be safe.